Hi, so uh, by popular demand, we're going to be uh, talking about some different breakfast and egg cookery today. So we're going to start off with just basics. Um, so this is just going to be simple. This is how you do an over easy egg. Um, and the same kind of principle applies whether you're doing over easy, over medium, over hard, any of those. Um, it's just all the only thing that varies is cooking time. So I'm going to put the tiniest like quarter teaspoon of oil in my pan, just enough so that it lubricates the pan a little bit and gives me a little margin for error. And I'm gonna crack my eggs straight in. And what I wanna do is go into kind of a room temperature pan. It's much easier and you have much better margin for error if you kind of gradually bring it up. I'm gonna season with salt and pepper. If you kind of gradually bring it up from this temperature as opposed to going into a ripping hot pan, because then what'll happen is while you're waiting for the rest of it to cook, that outside bit that's thinner as it spreads, because the pan's already so hot, is gonna get that brown caramelized outside, which if you want like a just a fried egg is actually what you're going for. But in this instance, that's not what we're doing. We're going for an over easy egg. So we want nice even color throughout. So as you can see here, the whites are starting to cook. The pan size actually does matter, but only in terms of the shape of the egg that you're cooking. If I have a big nonstick pan that I'm trying to do one egg in, that white is just gonna expand and expand and expand and expand and get really thin. And then you're more like, you're gonna have kind of less padding and it's gonna be more difficult to flip your egg without cracking it. Um, and when I say flip your egg, I really do mean flip your egg. You're much, much better off being confident and doing a little flip as opposed to trying to do it with a spatula. If you're going in there with a metal spatula or something and trying to flip it over that way, you're way, way more likely to agitate your yolk and break it. Um, so you're better off just kind of being confident, doing a little, little trial and error. And so right now, you'll notice that even with the lubrication, it's stuck on me slightly. So again, rub, whenever you have to handle it, you want rubber spat, not metal, because you don't want to risk like tearing it too badly or breaking your yolk. So I'm just gonna go around that outside bit that I know is sticking and get it to move around. What you're going for is for it to be able to move without like, without you having to push it. Like it should just slide around in the pan. The, the thing to do also, if it's getting like this, is just add a splash of oil and lubricate the pan a bit more. So I'm gonna move that around. The oil is gonna help it move and now you see that it's nice and moving. So now you can see we've gotten to the point that our, our white is fully cooked through. We're ready to flip our egg. So now that we're ready to flip it, we're going to kill our heat, make sure that our heat's off because all the residual heat is going to finish it on the other side so that we don't overcook our yolk. So we want to get it nice and lined up and, and straight and just give it a little bump like we talked about before with that little kind of a jump saute move like that. And now my heat's off. So I'm just letting the residual heat in the pan finish that egg. I'm not, I'm not adding more heat to it. Um, if you have an electric stove as opposed to a gas stove and you can't just immediately kill your heat, just move it onto a burner that isn't on and move it off of that, that ring or that flat surface that's still, that's still going. Now the difference between, this is over easy, which means it's still gonna be nice and runny in the middle. Over medium is kind of cooked through in the middle, but still kind of gelatinous and has a little bit of give to it. Over hard is just hard. The, the advantage to over hard is it's a lot easier because you can just break your yolk and cook it on either side because you're cooking it all the way anyway. So there's no point in trying to keep the yolk intact. Um, and it really is just the difference in terms of cook time is seconds, like seconds matter when it comes to egg cookery like this, you know, on a, on a on an over easy egg like this, it's gonna be 15 seconds a side. If it's over medium, it's gonna be like 25 seconds a side. It's, it's, very, it's very, very minimal the amount, of, the amount of, of time difference between one, one level of cookery or another. So it's something you really kinda, of, once you've started it, you gotta keep your eye on and you can't really walk away from it. Okay, so now we're gonna learn how to do sunny side up. So we did over easy already. Sunny side up is a similar runny yolk to over easy, except that we're not going to flip the egg. Um, so I have my pan going with a splash of oil like I did before. We're gonna crack our egg straight in. And now there's multiple ways you can do this. I can either turn my heat down a little bit and let this kind of slowly cook like this in the pan and let the bottom cook until the residual heat comes up through the bottom and finishes. Um, that's not as exact as the way that we're gonna do it now. It's, it's 
and in fact, it's actually much more difficult to do it that way as well. So once we see our egg starting to starting to solidify on the bottom, and the whites are move, the whites are gone, and we can kind of like move it around a little bit, we're going to kill our heat, and I have my oven set to broil, and we're going to go in the oven, and this will only take 10 sec 10 15 seconds or so. And so what the when you're doing it in the oven, it's not only is the residual heat from the stove going to continue cooking it through the bottom, but all that that circular heat in the air in the oven is going to finish the top for you so it goes evenly on both sides and you have a nice, clean, even cook on your egg, as opposed to doing it on the stove where that bottom might get a little browned or a little crispy or go a little further than you want. Um, you have a little bit, as long as you're on top of your egg in the oven, you have a little bit more time doing it this way. And this is still a very fast cook. It's probably 30 seconds in terms of total time that you're cooking. Um, so we're gonna have a look at it real fast. We can see that it's already gotten to the point where it's detached. There's a little bit of raw white on top, so we're gonna let it go another five to 10 seconds. But see how that had didn't have any browning around the outside. It was a nice, clean, white, even. It's like the egg you'd see in an advertisement. That's, that's what we're going for here. So we'll give it another couple seconds um, just to set that white that's around the outside of the yolk. But the yolk, you're really just trying to cook it enough to set it in the white. Beyond that, you want it to be nice and runny on a sunny side up egg. All right, so now we can see our white's cooked through. The yellow's, the yellow's nice and set in there. And even just this little bit of residual cooking here is gonna finish it. So we'll season with our salt and pepper and we're gonna come out of our pan. We're going to do omelets. Uh, so we have our two eggs for two egg omelet here already cracked. And I'm gonna hit this with a splash of cream, just about a tablespoon or so of cream. And the reason we do the cream is it, you're basically adding fat. And so what that fat does is it's adding like a more moist mouthfeel. And so what that does is it's giving you kind of some margin for error on your, on your egg cook. So if you go a touch over, it doesn't dry out on you. And so you still are more likely to have a nice moist, um, a nice moist egg. So we have our, we're just gonna do basic cheese and chive omelet here. So we'll set our cheese and chive over here and bring this with us. And we have again, just a small splash of oil in our pan. We're gonna go in with our egg. And let that gradually come up. And as this comes up to temp, we'll season it with salt and pepper. So you can already see that the edges of this are starting to finish, are starting to cook already. You can see that on the pan. So now I'm gonna run this around the outside to try to get a little bit more surface area of my for my omelet because the the more I can get this to run around, the more like it's going, the more evenly it's going to cook. Now the other thing I'm gonna do is as this starts to cook a little bit more, I'm going to break it up in the center so that some of it runs out and forms that bottom layer. So as this continues to go, I'm gonna let it go just a minute longer. So I'm gonna put my spatula right in the middle and I'm just gonna move my pan around that spatula. And I'm breaking that up in the middle and so all of that excess egg that was sitting on top now gets to fall through and I can just run it back round and let it fill in the gaps. And so as that's setting, we're getting pretty close here. There's not a lot of there's not a lot of uh, of runny egg left. So that's why that's where we're going to add our cheese. We're gonna add our cheese here and let that last bit of cooking finish it. And you want it to still be a touch runny when you take it out of the pan, because that when you flip it over, it's still gonna be hot egg on either side. It's like folding a crepe or a pancake together. So you want that that kind of finishing residual heat to be what finishes the egg and melts the cheese. So I'm gonna take my pan, get this so that it moves, moves nice and easily. You can still see it's still slightly runny on top. And we're just gonna kind of gradually get it out and just use the pan to fold it over. And so now because 
I let that new egg seep through. I didn't get a lot of browning. I have a nice even cook throughout the entire egg. And then you'll see when we cut into it, pardon me. That the inside, the cheese is melted and the inside is still nice and moist. We haven't had, we don't have this dried out scrambled egg. It's holding together, but the minute I cut into it, it oozes out. So it's holding together, but only just. And so now is when you would hit it with your fresh herb garnish and finish it with a little chive. All right, so now we're gonna do one of my favorite breakfast things, which is a way to use up your leftover rice from the night before, and we're gonna make some breakfast fried rice. So first thing is you want your rice to be nice and cold, and you also want to kind of break it up a little bit before you go in the pan. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna wet my hands a little bit and just kind of break up the clumps so that I have more individual grains of rice when I go in. And it'll help keep it from kind of steaming and that, because what, what you really want is defined, like individual pieces of fried rice. You don't want it to be like this massive, just mush that's <laughs> being cooked together in a pan. Sorry. So the other thing that's really important is I've gotten, you don't have, doesn't have to be a wok like I have. It can be any kind of nonstick pan will work just fine. I just, I happen to have it. So let's, why not? Um, is you need to really be patient and let your pan get ripping hot. That's the other thing that's going to keep these, this rice from clumping together and overcooking and kind of steaming in itself and turning into sticky rice as opposed to being the nice fried rice that we want. So we're gonna get about a tablespoon of oil in here and you can see how this is smoking. We want this properly hot. It's really difficult. It's, the reason you gotta be patient is in most kind of burners in Western kitchens, don't in home kitchens, don't get hot enough to really do this properly unless you're really patient with it. Um, so you wanna make sure your, your, everything is properly hot. You're gonna go straight in with your rice and like really use the full surface area of your pan to break it up. So that way you get these nice individual grains of rice in your fried rice, as opposed to everything clumping together on you. So I'm gonna let this go for a minute. I have the heat as high as I can possibly have it. I want it nice and ripping hot. The other thing is, is you need to, you need to do this. If you're doing more than this bit that I'm doing here, which is a little over a cup, if you're doing enough for your whole family or something, you're gonna wanna do this in batches. Because if you try to throw three cups of rice into something like this, it's just not gonna be hot enough. It's gonna drop your temperature way too much. And by the time it comes back to where you want it, everything's gonna steam and clump together and it's not gonna be what you're going for. So once this starts to get nice and hot and cook a little bit, I'm gonna give it another 10 or 15 seconds. Then we're gonna go in with our ginger and scallion. And give that a stir in and let it cook in the nice high heat. Again, you're just trying to keep this from clumping together. Nice individual grains of rice. And so once you get to this point, we're ready to add our egg. But we don't want the egg to mix in with the rice until it's cooked, because otherwise it's just gonna absorb into the rice and you're gonna have this gloopy mess. So what we're gonna do is move the rice off to the side and give ourselves a splash of oil and crack our egg straight in on the opposite side of the wok and just let it fry there. We're gonna break it up See it starting to solidify and cook. And once that's nice and properly cooked, then we can mix it into our rice. And that way we're still gonna have our nice separated grains of rice with our egg in it and not have a gloopy mess. And so now at the very end, we're gonna add in our peas and bacon, which are already cooked. And our soy sauce and our sesame oil. And all of this is just, at this point, your rice is cooked, your egg is cooked, everything's ready to go. 
We're just mixing it together and heating everything through. And you're gonna keep that nice high heat going. Again, my rice is nice individual grains. Nothing's clumping together. Nothing's turning to mush. And at this point, you're pretty much there. So the key points again, making sure that your heat is as high as humanly possible and that you're working in batches so that you're not dropping the temperature too like crazy at any point. And also that you're cooking your egg separately before you mix it in so that your egg doesn't coat your rice and turn it into a paste on you. That's it, ready to serve it up.